My name is Thomas Deere. I'm a Mohawk from Ganawaga, and I freelance as a comic book colorist and illustrator. I'd say over the past eight years, I've worked on about over 40 comics. I still remember when I was in school, we, we had like an intro to commercial art uh, class, and the teacher told us two things to remember. One thing he always said was, get the job and worry about how you're going to do it later. And I've come across that situation a couple of times where I was like, I don't know how I'm going to pull this job off, but I'll take the job and I'll worry about it later. And you kind of scare yourself into pulling it off. And the second thing was, you're only as good as your last job. And it's so true. If you fail, people are going to know about it. <laughs> In an industry that's so close-knit, like, uh, like the comic industry, Editors know each other, creative teams know each other, and nobody wants to hire somebody that's going to mess up on their deadline or, or turn out a product that's uh, not high quality. Deadlines are always nerve-wracking because if you fail to perform, you put everybody else behind. You put the whole book at risk. And the way it works in the comic industry is the company has to put out solicitations to kind of promote the, the book like months ahead of time. It's scary to know people are already pre-ordering the book that you haven't even started yet. And, it, and in a way, it all depends on you making that deadline. And if you don't make that deadline, you could forget about working again because an editor is not going to work with somebody that's unreliable. So you really just got to respect that deadline. In a lot of people's cases who, who do freelance comic book work, they have second jobs, like, like, like myself. I can't just do comic, I can't just live on comics. So that means long hours. It's definitely not an occupation to, to become rich with. You're doing it because this is the work you, you love to do.